tonight on Bondi Rescue. This is not a swimming area. The old man of the sea. One of H's toughest rescues. Hey, you nearly went down, you nearly died. An injured boy takes a sudden turn for the worse. Then... Where we go? A swimmer lost in backpacker's rib. And the trials and tribulations of a lifeguard. I don't think she's going to get in trouble, but hopefully she does. <laughs> just had a report of somebody digging a hole. He's got a shovel that you pretty much can't even see him. You can just see the sand coming out of the hole. A couple of New Zealand lads are digging themselves into a very big hole. Troy is sent in to bring them back to earth. Uh, no, it's too dangerous because if that falls, you're going to get stuck. On, who's going to, how can you get yourself out of there? How long has that taken you to dig? So imagine if you got stuck in there, how long is it going to take us to get you out? Oh, if that fell down, they pretty much wouldn't be able to get out. They didn't realise that. They've been digging for an hour, but they didn't realise that how long it would take if, if it actually went down on them. It'd take pretty much a bit longer than an hour to get them out. And by that time, you're, you're not going to be alive. Nah, we're going to have to push it in. Won't be able to get your shovel out of it, I think. Just woke up and felt like digging a big hole. It's a really big hole. <laughs> it's common pastime in New Zealand. Among the millions of visitors to Bondi every year, many are experiencing the ocean for the first time. We've got people from all different types of backgrounds coming down here to Bondi and they've never seen probably a dangerous current sign or a certain red and yellow flag. So there's no disposition on them. They're unaware of the dangers and they don't really know what to look for. Usually nine times out of ten that'll lead into a sticky situation and they won't ignore it from that day on, I can guarantee that. The surf is pumping. Lifeguards have erected warning signs on every rip. But some swimmers just don't get the message. Yeah, Bondi Central to Blue. Dino, can you get down to the south end corner? There's a head in the corner there. How does he swim? I got it. A swimmer has strayed into a rip at South End. Yeah, boys, um, you might be out here. It looks pretty bad. The man finds it impossible to make headway against the turbulent current. Reedy bolts in to reach him. The guy getting swept down the south end corner, he looks pretty bad. He's just in a bad spot where lots of waves are breaking. The same rip helps Reedy get to the man's location. But suddenly, the swimmer is nowhere to be seen. There's a chance the waves may have pushed the man closer to shore. But if the swimmer has gone under, finding him in the turbulent water will be close to impossible. Then Dino thinks he spotted him. doesn't speak English. Reedy can't be sure he's got the right person. Don't know, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely this bloke in here. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I, he was out the back a minute ago and I think it's him who just got swept in on the shore. Just get, ask him if he was out the back before. Can you talk? Reedy has no option but to head back out in case the swimmer is still out there. After a fruitless search, lifeguards can only assume the swimmer was the same one Reedy spoke to. Yeah, just a reminder, all the swimmers here. Guys, girls, this is a really, really dangerous spot to swim. It's not safe at all. Please move right up the beach to the red and yellow flag. He got swept straight out in the south end corner. Then kind of set, just hit him and he got swept right back in again. He was real lucky. He was really struggling for a second then. Thank you. All the way from Brazil, Ronaldo is on his first trip to Bondi. The the piso, no, 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 take on for my blood. Oh mate, no speaker, no, sorry, sorry, no speaker. That's all right. That's okay, take care. Thank you. Oh, you, you rescued take yourself. Care. I didn't do anything. I just came. Oh. The surfers okay. helped you. Okay. Mate, he was trying to speak to me in Portuguese, and I have enough trouble understanding English, so he was no hope. Uh, yeah, maybe I think I've made a lifelong friend, but I didn't even help him. 
When signs and flags fail to get the message across, lifeguards bring in the heavy artillery. Those people out on the sandbank pillars, do you mind paying some attention? Move back over this way. It's the H-Man. Uh, boys, for the fifth time, this is not a swimming area. Yeah, you're laughing, mate. You'll go to New Zealand if you're not careful. You're all ignoring me. Now, you nearly lost your buddy. This lady or this guy here, you'll go too. Don't swim here. Why do you think I'm making this? Do you think I like it? Lady working in a trouble right now. Hello, lady. Hello. Mate. My name's Harry Nightingale. Uh, I'm 59 in April this year. Uh, I've lived in Bondi most of my life. I was born 1950. I went to Bondi Public School. Uh, my dad grew up in the surf club. He was an Australian title holder. My dad actually went to the Olympic Games in 36, Australian swimming coach. Uh, I've been a lifeguard now for 12 seasons. And I love the, loved the whole, the whole uh, lifestyle. Yeah, Harry's got a lot of experience doing surfing and, and been hanging down here at Bondi all his life. You know, he might drive a few of the boys mad here and there, but you know what, he's doing his job and he, he's good at his job. Monitoring the beach, lifeguards spot another swimmer struggling in backpacker's rip. Guy in the summer corner. Harry, look at the Harry South corner. Yeah, H, they've got their hands up, mate. You have to go and get him. I'm on the way, mate. H races from the other end of Bondi. In a rescue, seconds can matter. The swimmer isn't just struggling, he's starting to drown. Come on, H. Yeah. few more seconds under, and the man would have drowned. He may already have taken in a lot of water. Let's get him on now. In the surf, the man begins to panic. H has to be firm to keep the situation under control. I tell you what, he probably won't swim there ever again in his life. Yeah. The tourist from Korea was seconds from drowning and H was seconds from dealing with a dead body. Is that all? Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, don't give me this. Oh. You should be up in the flags. Never swim outside the flags. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. You nearly drowned. Mm. You nearly lost him. You wouldn't have been smiling. Serious, you nearly died. <laughs> hey, you, know you nearly went down, you nearly died. Oh. Another two minutes here and gone. I'll pull him like right this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, serious. I saw, I saw. I saw. Hey, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you, so thank you. Thank you. Hey, I think it's lucky to be alive. If I hadn't seen him, he'd be dead. You wouldn't be smiling, love you, being here too. Mate, that's the closest one I've had for a while. Mate, I got. I had to go that deep to pull him out of the water. The man's friends still don't seem to appreciate what's just happened. 12 years I've been on the beach, you know, that goes in the top five. And look, I'm nervous, I'm scared. I was, that really, I, I thought I was going to miss him. I mean, like, he'd sink. I don't like seeing him sink. Yeah, I don't think some people realise how quickly it can happen. You've seen it and I've seen it. It's a horrible thing to happen for a lifeguard to... <coughs> As things return to normal, Terry attends a man feeling nauseous on the sand. Go ahead, Central. Yeah, the, the gentleman at H has um, saved a while back has um, taken ill. We're going to have to get him checked out by an ambulance, mate. He's feeling dizzy, nauseated, and he's about to heave right up. But... Yeah, I'll, be, I'll call an ambo now, so I'll get to you sooner. That guy I rescued before, the, he's uh, collapsed. We're going back to uh, attend him right now. 
when they swallow a lot of water, sometimes this happens. So uh, we're going to just have a look at him now. Terry's here already. This is your boy, H. Yeah, mate. We'll, yeah. Leave, the, we'll leave the payout to later because yeah. he's dead set. Look, look at this. Look what we got here. We've got beer, we've got salt water, we've got the whole lot. We're going to need to get rid of the beer bottles. We get this guy's name, Sun, the guy you rescued, and he's feeling quite ill. I reckon he's got a combination of beer yeah. and a whole lot of salt water. If Sun has water in his lungs, it could present dangerous complications. We'll get the amber, OK? You can relax, mate. You're good now. Alcohol affected, swimming outside the flags, and a poor swimmer, it's a dangerous mix. We have an ambulance coming. Do you understand? Ambulance yeah. is coming very soon. He may have he may have to give you medication. Okay. Sit up here, that's the way, mate. Just we'll get you really comfortable. Okay. The friends now realise this is no joke. We're going to get an ambulance because he has swallowed a lot of water. Yeah. And if there could be complications. He was right under the water. He must have swallowed. Plus, he's been drinking beer. You know, it's not a good combination. Oh, I didn't know the situation is here is like this. I didn't know. I'm very, very worried about it. This gentleman was under the water. I got him, pulled him up from shoulder deep. Okay, you don't know how long he was under for? Uh, mate, it would have been not more than 30 seconds, but uh, he was sinking when I got there. He was doing what we call a tea bag. He went under about three times, yeah. and then I was about two board lengths, and he, and he started sinking. X-rays will soon confirm whether Sun has water in his lungs that could lead to serious infection. I'll seriously say he would have died. We, we throw that around a lot when we do rescues, but this is really serious. He was that far down. If I hadn't seen him, or someone else hadn't seen him, he would have been Tadas. He would have been visiting his ancestors. While the rest of Bondi continues playing, lifeguards can't relax. Now, there's suddenly a disturbing sight in the water. Between second and third ramp, mate, there's someone was kicking face down with his head there. No, I don't know, he hasn't stood up. Yeah. Yeah, Maxie, go pretty quick, mate. Go, get out there. For lifeguards, there's no more ominous sight than a motionless swimmer. Doesn't put one stroke in. He's got his head up now. Thankfully, the swimmer, a woman, now appears OK. But her behaviour still has lifeguards concerned. Come, swim. It looked bad because he had his face Oh, he's got hold of her. When waves were going over him, usually they put their head up. Maxie decides to bring her in. Strangely, she's wearing a lifeguard's rash vest. It looks like you faced the young, you know what was going on. OK. Right, pop up, stand up. Yeah, maybe you just go down between the flags. Just don't do the underwater thing. Don't, don't do it. Because people freak out and then we have to race down. And not always, because this one looks like you've got clothes on, so... Yeah. Oh, uh, right, then that's the thing. What, she was floating around? Just, she was not, not floating, she was just face down. Oh, yeah. And I go, she goes, I was looking at the bottom, I go, you don't have goggles on, you can't see. So what, which, where's she going now? Would you tell her to go up the flags? I told her to get, no, yeah, I told her to go up the flags, but I said just try and stay out of the water and don't do that. It freaks us out. She's just gone straight back in, Maxie. Doing the exact same thing again. Nice. This time, Maxie makes sure Moira gets the message. Just to me, she had a head face down, kicking on, with not, no strokes. Oh, she looked like she was. You know what I mean? But usually when a wave goes over them, they put their head but up. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but she, kept, she kept doing it. Like, she I was just going, I don't know what's going on here. Moira is escorted out of the water a second time. Now, Hopper was concerned about what she's wearing. I don't know where you got that from. You can't be wearing lifeguard rashes, Jenny. Why? Well, can't wear that. Uh, because what if the people... You might think I'm looking after them. Yeah, how would you know? True. I was wearing this. I suppose this is what got them. And I love staying with my face down in the water. So I just did that and hung around for a long time. And suddenly I found this 
beautiful man coming with a lifeguard raft to save me. I said, I don't need saving, I'm really all right. <laughs> and apparently I shouldn't be wearing this because somebody might think I'm a lifeguard and I'm not strong enough for that. <laughs> Risky behaviour at Bondi isn't restricted to the beach. Concrete can be as unforgiving as a dangerous rip. So someone's uh, had a stack at the skate park. Could be a head injury, mate. Chapo and Dunstan have been called to an accident in the skate park. Eden is 10. He's drifting in and out of consciousness after hitting his head. So what I'm going to do is, mate, I'm just going to lift your head. OK. Yeah, just, that'll just make it a bit more comfortable for you, mate. Despite the warnings, Eden wasn't wearing any safety equipment. Lifeguards take a head injury very seriously. He didn't have a helmet on, but um, he dropped in and he, he, he went back like that. He flipped at the back of his head out of it completely. Yeah. His head just sort of bounced off cement. And he was just out, just like that. You can move all your fingers and there's no fing there's no tingliness there. Nothing tingly. His spine appears okay, but being dizzy and nauseous is a bad sign. Now, Eden's mum has heard the news. Hey guys, I'll, I'll call an ambulance now. Maisie is a nurse and knows how serious her son's injury might be. Lifeguards are reluctant to move him as they wait for paramedics. You hit your head twice, all right? Uh, a, a helmet is a really good thing to have, get mum and dad to buy. You've got a nice big bump over there. Any pain there, mate? Nothing? I'm just going to keep on going all the way down your spine. Any pain there? Eden's cognitive functions are examined. The blow to his head has affected his memory. He can't quite remember some reasonably basic things. Four of you should remember it's Saturday, it's the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Particularly as we've just gone back, you've just gone back to school, haven't you? Uh, yeah. You don't know what's happened to his skull, whether there's trauma in, in, the, um, in the brain and also high, high um, neck pain as well, or vertebrae breaks oh, as well. As a nurse, I know what a head injury can do, and and I was, I was just relieved I didn't see a lot of blood, that's all. But that, that doesn't mean anything either, because it could be internal, so we'll just wait till we get to the hospital. One, two, three. He'll go and he'll probably have a scan, he'll, get, he'll have a physical, and hopefully there'll be nothing wrong. He's probably had a big fight, he's going to have a big lump. For the pain, not as much as when he recovers, I can assure you. X-rays and scans will later reveal Eden has a hairline fracture in his skull. He'll spend a week in hospital recuperating. Late afternoon, and lifeguards are on a final patrol of the beach. But three swimmers have caught their attention. This girl's getting out into... Uh area of concern. I might just have to uh, go over to these two while you'll keep your eye on that lady out there and just find out if they've been drinking and that way we have a bit of background if something was to happen. Hello? Your friend. Your friend out there. She's out near that dangerous rip and we thought possibly you might have been drinking. Okay. But she's not. That's no, no, good. she's just naturally like crazy. Like naturally that. crazy. She's from Estonia. She go save her. Well away from the safety of the flags, the woman heads right into the impact zone. Obviously, we can't leave the beach if there's a problem out there. So we're just going to have to make sure this lady gets back to the beach nice and safely before we leave. The woman seems to be managing, but a set of big waves will test her. Yeah, um, yeah, she's very, she, I think I might have been watching her. She swims pretty good, yeah. Jilly from Estonia has astounded us with her swimming ability. She not only is swimming strongly, she's busted into butterfly, 
and that warms the heart of a lifeguard late in the day to see a girl from Estonia who you think should get herself into all sorts, butterflying her way out of troubles. Yeah, I don't think she's going to get in trouble, but hopefully she does. <laughs> Bondi Beach, where the only thing to expect is the unexpected. Yeah, I didn't get to get, get in the water, but I think that was the next best thing. Uh, in 20 years of lifeguarding, it's hard to round off a day better than that exhibition we've just seen. Uh, beautiful light, warm water, three lovely ladies from various parts all around the world. Doesn't get any better than this. Next time on Bondi Rescue, when your back's against the wall, Experience counts. That was hell. <laughs> Did you see that? The boys in blue go head to head.